Imagine education to be like the double helix structure of the DNA. The first strand is formal education, which is important for acquisition of knowledge and to get a certified qualification. Timeless life skills workshops and clubs are the second strand of education. Non-formal, hands-on, fun ways of learning skills and dispositions imperative for making youngsters future-ready and life-ready. Today's exam-centric education unduly emphasizes learning the content of a discipline, usually by rote, and students often lack a deeper understanding of fundamental concepts of a discipline and the discipline's underlying thinking framework. For example, take thinking like a scientist versus thinking like a historian. While there are similarities in the two disciplines, the way a scientist thinks is also very different from the way a historian thinks. A scientist observes nature, formulates a hypothesis, makes a prediction, conducts experiments, and draws an inference about a natural phenomenon. A historian does not have a time machine and cannot conduct experiments and events that happened decades or centuries ago. Thus, a historian relies on the provenance of primary and secondary sources, that is, the bias, accuracy, and reliability of these sources, to interpret claims about the past. In the context of the 21st century, when the future is being called VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, to succeed, young people not only need to specialize in a specific domain, they also need to hone different modes of thinking, so that they can abstract new patterns from the knowledge they acquire and join the dots in novel ways to find innovative solutions to complex problems. Only then will they be able to create value. Timeless life skills workshops and clubs complement the first strand of education, the formal education, by focusing on cultivating the frameworks of thinking of different disciplines and while doing activities and projects, students learn how experts in different disciplines think. Along with the acquisition of knowledge and learning different frameworks of thinking, for flourishing in the 21st century, young people also need to know about the emerging trends and technologies that are shaping their future. Projects and activities for timeless life skills workshops and clubs are thus designed such that the young participants cultivate dispositions that make them life-ready, hone skills that make them future-ready, foster different modes of thinking, and develop familiarity with emerging trends and technologies. Typically, while designing a STEM activity or project for our workshops and clubs, we start by looking at an emerging technology, say, electronics and robotics. We then think of a challenge that the students will enjoy tackling. The modes of thinking. In the case of electronics and robotics, this would be thinking like a scientist and thinking like an engineer, are embedded in the activity itself. We then create critical and creative thinking questions for what we call pause and ponder sessions, which happen while the students are working on the activity or project. We also curate related success stories that we think the students will relate with and get inspired. We plan discussions about what career opportunities will emerge in that particular domain and what sort of skills and competencies will be required to explore career opportunities in that area. Here is one illustrative example from our Tinkering with Electronics workshop that is a part of our Exploring STEM club. In the Tinkering with Electronics workshop, students start by exploring basic concepts like what do students think is electricity? Is their electricity in their school same as the one they see when there is a thunderstorm? Students then conduct experiments like exploring static electricity by sticking balloons to the wall or making their hair stand. In groups of five, students tinker with bulbs, motors, LED, different types of switches and other components. After 15 minutes of tinkering, we explore what each group has made. Invariably, they would have made random connections and this leads to exploratory questions. Why is that group's bulb glowing brighter? How has that group connected three components together? With senior students, this leads to a discussion on circuits, alternating current versus direct current, and on critical thinking questions like, should we now have a DC power distribution because most of the devices at home use DC? The guided discovery phase then follows, where students have to think like a scientist and conduct experiments. For example, they flip the battery polarity and test the impact on each component. The instructor then demonstrates a remote control car and asks the children how do they think the car is going forward in reverse. Most of them connect the dots and say that the polarity of the motors attached to the wheels is being flipped. Students then build simple toy cars and the challenge is to make circuits on a breadboard to make the car move forward, reverse and turn left and right. This activity can stretch into the robotics workshop where students learn about microcontrollers and sensors that can be used to control the car they have made and convert it into a robotic car. From here, we can also stretch the activity into coding, 
and students use microcontrollers like the BBC Microbit and visual programming tools like Microsoft's MakeCode to write simple programs to automate the car that they have made. Sensors can be attached to this motor and more complex programming can be done to have a finer control over the car. Each workshop or project has pause and ponder sessions for building critical thinking skills like why and how does this work? Or creative thinking skills, curiosity questions like how else, why not? And problem solving, imagining new applications for the creation that the students have designed. Gradually, students learn to formulate better and more insightful questions and over a period of time, they learn new skills and dispositions that make them life ready and future ready.